What's up guys? Let's talk about how to get clients for your social media marketing agency. You're going to want to go ahead and save this video to your watch later so you can come back to it and reference it. And it should operate as a bit of a guide when it comes to closing clients for your business. Before we jump into it though, why should you listen to us? Well, I'm going to pull up on my screen here our actual CRM so you can see exactly what we're working with in terms of our current revenue. You can see right now we're at $81,500, which puts us right at about 978,000 ARR or annual recurring revenue for our business. That's right where Derek and I like to be. We like to kind of hover between 75 $90,000 per month, just based on our staffing, current team workload, and honestly, the number of people that we want to manage within our business at any given time. We find that that's really our sweet spot. You can see here as well, we've got about $110,000 in additional near-term close. We've got about $720,000 in proposals out there right now. We've got about half a mil in appointments scheduled. These are people that we haven't met with yet, but we've qualified in based on questionnaires and discussions that we've already had. And then over here on the far left, we're close to another $3 million in potential MRR just from people that we've had great conversations with, but are in the on-hold stage for us right now. If you watch to the end of this video, you're going to understand how we do things at our agency, how we teach students of the SMA blueprint to do it for theirs, and how to have a literal queue of clients lining up to do business with you and your agency. So step one begins with outreach. Now there are a ton of different ways that you can do outreach. In the SMA blueprint alone, we cover 11 different methods in incredibly in-depth detail, complete with companion guides, training videos, all that jazz. Now 11 methods might sound super overwhelming. And honestly, if you were to try all 11 at one given time, it's, it's just not going to work for you. You're going to spread yourself way too thin. You're not going to actually understand what's working and why and you're going to become a master of none of them. I would instead suggest that you focus on picking two methods of outreach and focus on mastering those two methods of outreach. If I was starting an agency over today, there's two or three that I personally would pick. First is going to be cold email and the second would be a choice between either LinkedIn or cold calling depending on the niche that I'm going after. If you're afraid to pick up the phone and cold call, all good, pick another method. Now the reason why I suggest that everybody start with cold email is one, it's a super low barrier of entry. It's really easy to set up. It's super cheap to get very, very large lists. In the description down below, I'll link you to some free cold email scripts that have worked for thousands of others and you can start using those right away. I'll also link to another video that walks you through exactly what you should do to be using those. The goal of outreach is simple. It's to sell the first meeting. Instead of sending over an honors thesis or a essay to the lead that you're reaching out to, make it short, make it succinct and very, very to the point. State who you are, what they can expect on the other end of a call with you in terms of some sort of result and a call to action to either reply to you to schedule something or to just go out right and book a call with you directly. The question that I see all the time is how much outreach should I be doing per day? As a rule of thumb, I like to say that you should have at least 50 manual cold touches going out when you're first getting started. And the reason I say that is because that's exactly what Derek and I did to be able to quit our nine to five jobs. Now, step two is we want to schedule a discovery call or a discovery meeting. So now we've been doing our outreach. We've been sending our emails, sending our LinkedIn messages, making our calls, and we've got them interested. We're starting to get some responses. What we want to do is schedule a discovery call to talk about how our agency might be able to help them. Now, let's keep this in mind here. If they've scheduled a call with you, if they've replied favorably and they want to have a call about how you can help their business, Business, there's something that they want on the other end of that line. They're hoping that in speaking with you, there's going to be an answer to some problem that they have in their business. Otherwise, they wouldn't be wasting their time. Most agency owners approach this first call, though, from a position of desperation. Instead, you have something that these business owners want. Keep that in the back of your mind and act like it on the call. Now, just like Outreach had one single meeting to sell the meeting, so does the discovery call. It has one single purpose. You want to get all the answers to questions, all the ammunition from the call, so that by the time the call is over, you have everything that you need to make it seem stupid for this business owner not to do business with you and your agency. On most intro calls, most agency owners just jump in and start talking about their agency right away. They talk about the services they provide, why they're different, blah, blah, blah. The business owners do not care. Do this instead. Start off by keeping things like crack jokes and just to get them to open up and let their guard down a little bit because I'm about to grill them with a bunch of questions. The goal here is to understand where their business is at today. Next, you want to understand where they actually want to be. The gap between where they're at today and where they actually want to be is the opportunity that you have to do business with them. They have capacity, they have additional bandwidth, they have billable hours from their team member. There's something that is missing from where they're at today to where they actually want to be. So long as there's a difference there, there's something that you can help them with and they should be wanting to pay your agency so long as you do this correctly. The next thing that you want to understand is where they're getting their customers and their clients from today and what they've tried in the past. Oftentimes they'll say things like, well, we've done Facebook, right? So dig deeper on that. Ask questions like when you say that you're doing Facebook, what are you doing? Are you just posting to Facebook? Are you running ads? Have you tried running ads in the past? Who ran the ads? What did they do? Start getting an understanding and perspective in terms of what they actually tried within their business. The goal here is to understand what their marketing mix has looked like from the inception of the business all the way up to today. Now, I'm obviously paraphrasing on what this discovery call 
football should look like at a high level. But the goal here doesn't change. You want to understand where they're at today, where they want to be tomorrow, and what they've tried to grow their business. When you understand the answers to those questions, you now have all the ammunition that you need to close them as a client lights out. Now, this is where we want to maintain control. Position for a next call is a next step when you have all the information that you need. Without telling them much of anything about you or about your process or really peeling back the onion on any of this, say, I appreciate all the context that you've given me. I've got a lot of different ideas on how I can help you grow your business. What I'd like to do is take a deep dive, do another audit of all your social media and all of your web presence so I can better understand your business with the context of everything we talked about on this call. I'm going to go ahead and put together a custom proposal that I'd like to review with you later this week or next week. Let's go ahead and compare calendars while we still got a couple minutes left on this call and I'll work with my team to put together a custom proposal for that next call to review with you. Get that meeting booked live on the call so you don't have to email chase them following this initial introduction and then get off the phone. The next step is a proposal review. This is the call that we just scheduled. So now we've done some outreach and we're continuing to do it even though we have deals that are maturing in the pipeline and moving forward so that we always have the top of our funnel being topped up with new opportunities. We've had our initial discovery calls and they went great. We've got some awesome information. Now it's time to go ahead and put together a proposal. Now, if you don't know what a proposal is, a proposal is essentially a formalized, nicely designed document that talks about everything that you're going to be proposing that you can help their business with. It talks about your agency. It talks about their business, has some nice graphics on it, and overall just presents nicely what it is that you can help them with. Now, I want to be very clear because this question comes up. Do not send over the proposal before the call. Always run through it live with them on the call. In the description down below, I've got another awesome free asset for you guys. I've got a video where I walk you through how to create a proposal as well as a free proposal link for you that you can use for your agency right away. While you're there, if you've been learning something from this video, go ahead and drop a comment to support the channel. It really helps us out a lot. Now, the whole point of this proposal that we're going to put together is to have the client nodding their head and gaining agreement as we make our way through it. You want to read back to them everything that they told you on that call that you just had with them. For example, you told me that you were at XYZ with your business. Is that correct? And then because they told you that information, they're going to say, yep, exactly. Cool. And you told me that you're currently at ABC right now and you want to grow to XYZ. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. Right? So as you're going through this proposal on the different pages, you're gaining agreement and they're responding to you affirmatively every step of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit here. But the point is, as you've been going through this proposal, the lead on the other end of the line has been agreeing with you the entire time. You establish the fact that there's a place that they're at with their business. There's a place that they'd like to be with their business and that there is a gap there that you can help them with. You've gained agreement on things that they've tried in the past, that you understand that they've done some things in this area potentially before, and that you're going to present to them a strategy that's going to help them actually achieve the results that they want. By the time you get to pricing and the proposed services, they've already agreed with you this entire way through. This is super, super important. And this is why we want to do this live on a call with them. Only once this is done, do we then discuss our proposed services in great detail, as well as the price. It's a lot easier to put a $5,000 retainer in front of somebody when you've established that they have 1.5 million in ARR that they're trying to achieve for their business. They invest potentially $60,000 with you each year plus some ad spend, but they have the chance to make 1.5 million. All of a sudden, $5,000 per month seems pretty cheap for that type of ROI. Now, there's one additional step here that sometimes you'll need to use. When done correctly, you should close about 80% of the people that you're speaking with for that proposal review call. But about 10% of people you speak with might need to give it some thought, go and discuss it with a business partner, think about it overnight or go and check their budget to see if it's something that they can afford. In those situations, what I would do instead of pressing them and trying to one call close them and making them uncomfortable and potentially losing that deal because you're stressing them out, I would say, perfect, go ahead and review it, give it some thought. You know, let's do this. Let's go ahead and schedule another call for next week or the following week. You can gather questions or any thoughts that you might have and I can answer those live on a call so we can you know, discuss one-to-one. -one. Business owners really respond very, very well to this and this is basically just scheduling what is called a closing call. They'll usually come to you with questions that they maybe have or potentially ask for a small discount, which you should be prepared to give. And by the end of that final four step, you should be ready to do business with your new client. Now, this is obviously just scratching the surface of what we talk about in the SMA Blueprint program. So definitely check that out. One of the biggest things that we're known for is our sales training. So if you're looking to close more deals, grow your business and just not getting deals done right now, the Blueprint is a great place for you to get more information on that. I also just put together a super in-depth playlist here with all of our videos on how to get more clients for your agency and how to do outreach and really anything related to sales. Be sure to check that out right here after that video.